Hi, Steve Adubato here. There aren't many things more about this uh, job that I love than coming right here, in the heart of Newark, New Jersey, to the New Jersey Performing Arts Center to do one-on-one, uh, -on -one, our nightly series on public broadcasting and files to introduce my good friend, uh, our host here, John Schreiber, who is the President and Chief Executive Officer of the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, one-on-one -on -one at NJ Pack, part of our Newark at a Crossroads series. Good to see you, buddy. Likewise. It's great to be here. Um, but it's never the same. Always things moving. Um, good things happening. Biggest things happening for the new season, NJ Pack. What would you say? Oh, gosh. I mean, we just, we are presenting more uh, concerts and special events than ever. We just finished our 18th season. We did 415 events. Our attendance was up over 28% and we served uh, uh, 78,000 kids with our arts education program. So things are really popping around here, and they're popping in Newark, too. Yeah, let's talk about Newark. Okay. You and I just, we've talked about this all the time, because um, the work you're doing here at NJ Pack and the ancillary work isn't just about the arts, which is big enough. Mm -hmm. It's about economic development. That's right. Yeah. It's about building around here. And by the way, mm -hmm. since the last time we talked, uh, our partners, our brothers and sisters in public broadcasting, NJTV, housed right here in Newark, which is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. There's an arts and a cultural community being developed right here in Newark. It exists. I mean, it, it, it's been around for, for years. This is such a vibrant uh, uh, art scene in the city. And uh, gallery scene, the Newark Museum, the concerts and the sporting events that occur over at the Prudential Center. Um, Rutgers Newark is more engaged in the community than Nancy it's ever been. Nancy Cantor, the chancellor there? Yeah, with Nancy there. Big difference, big positive difference. And, and, uh, and so our hope, and, and Prudential has been a huge player in this, as you know, the hope is to articulate uh, uh, an arts and education district, right? An arts and education district. Yeah. What does that mean? Um, a destination. Uh, often people will come to the Arts Center for a concert uh, and they will come and they'll go. And the opportunity we have now with a development of what uh, we hope will be a destination cultural district is to bring people down to Newark uh, for the afternoon, to, to go to a gallery or to hang out in Military Park and have a meal, to attend Talk about a lecture. about Military Park. I'm sorry for interrupting, John. Military Park. Last time we talked, yeah. while things were happening, it yeah. is not the military park of today. Right. So the military park of today is a beautifully refurbished uh, public space. Is that what's um, right out there? Yeah, right guys, guys the take window. the long shot. Gorgeous. Beautiful yeah. uh, middle of the day in the fall 2015 as we shoot. Describe it. Last Saturday, uh, uh, we had a free family festival as part of the... Newark 350 uh, 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 preview events. We're going to be celebrating 350 years of Newark starting in January for a whole year. Hundreds of events occurring all over the city in all the five wards. Uh, but we did a preview event. It was a family festival. 3,000 people came to Military Park. 3,000 people. Yeah, and it just felt great. And, what kind of folks, uh, what kind of folks not only come to NJ Pack, mm -hmm. but what kind of folks would come to a Newark 350 celebration at Military Park? People from, citizens from all the wards, right? By the way, there are five wards in the city of Newark. I grew up uh, two miles from here in the North Ward of Newark. Famously. Famous, well, I didn't grow up famously. It is a famous ward. Um, <laughs> at the time, largely Italian-American, right. now mostly Hispanic, with a whole range of other uh, very diverse communities uh, there as well. But there are five wards to the city. Go ahead. That's right. So, so citizens came from all the wards, and uh, as good, Folks came from all over northern New Jersey, and we had folks in from Manhattan. So New, Hold on, John. New Yorkers came across the road. Yeah, 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 yeah. This event was promoted very widely, and people thought, well, that's a fun idea. Let's go to Newark for the afternoon, right? So yeah. that's, the, that's the thought. Let's turn Newark into a multi-purpose destination. Yeah. Do this. Let's talk about jazz. Sure. Your artistic passion. Yeah. One of your many, but it's, it's a big one of you, right? My, my, I spent 20 years in the jazz business, so yeah. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. <sighs> jazz big here. The James Moody Jazz the Festival. TD, TD James TD, Moody TD. Jazz Festival. Uh, listen, yeah. we do not miss that part right. because, by the way, in TD, a big part of uh, the corporate community helping make things happen. Yep. Describe the jazz connection here. Describe its connection to Newark, the great Saravon and others. Mm -hmm. Why is jazz in Newark and NJ Pack so closely tied together? Well, there's a great legacy of the music 
here that goes back 100 years. Um, Sarah Vaughan, as you said, famously grew up here. Uh, Earl Hines uh, spent time here. James Moody spent time here. Uh, Willie the Lion Smith, one of the great jazz pianists, Woody played Shaw. here. Woody Shaw as well, right. sure. Um, so lots of musicians either lived here um, or played here regularly through the years. And, Is there uh, a radio station down the street? Well, there's the <laughs> best jazz radio station in the world, you're right. Yep. WBGO is uh, you know, uh, within shouting distance of, of where we're sitting right now. Talk about the Rutgers connection. A little bit later on, we'll be talking to the leader of uh, that operation, right. Rutgers. And, and so the largest jazz archive in the world is here, the Institute of Jazz Studies in, at Rutgers. Wayne Winborn you're going to be meeting with, who's a spectacular character. Um, and many of the world's great jazz musicians live in northern New Jersey. They decided to make their homes in New Jersey. So NJPAC is, is, uh, has the largest jazz education program for teenagers uh, in the region, mm -hmm. the Wells Fargo Jazz for Teens program. And so, and we have Christian McBride, who is a friend yes. of both of ours, as our jazz advisor, and Montclair kid, yes. right? So that combination of elements makes it essential that NJPAC be a significant presenter of jazz, and we are. Uh, so we curate, we present, and we teach, and we train, and it's important to us that people understand not only the Newark jazz history, but just the broader significance of jazz. Jim, real quick, give me 30 seconds on arts education at NJPAC. Right, so arts education is a variety of things. It's kids attending performances, most of those kids are from economically disadvantaged homes without those opportunities that we are able to afford. Uh, a lot of kids wouldn't see a live performance, right? We train kids on instruments. We bring performance into schools uh, in Greater Newark. Um, and uh, we are encouraging kids as creators, you know, kids as improvising musicians, kids as choreographers, kids as writers, kids as composers. That's the idea. Finally, Nork at a Crossroads, the series we're doing. Mm -hmm. We're interviewing all sorts of people. As you know, you helped us start it um, with our partners in public broadcasting. We'll be also be taping over at uh, the museum in, in, in a few months. We taped at NJIT. This is uh, how we started right here at uh, NJPAC. How bullish are you on the future of the city? Oh, I'm like, I'm all in. Yeah. We have a spirit of collaboration. Um, in town, I think that is, uh, in the few years that I've been here, is unique. We have a mayor who is a practical progressive, right? A guy who really is a visionary, but is a realist about what's possible, uh, and, and, and there's that. Um, and we have people who are genuinely passionate about taking the city to the next level. So we couldn't be happier about where the city is at, and more importantly, what's possible. And none of that would be possible without the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, the rock oh, right here. I know Prudential <laughs> is the rock on one level, but um, it's nice. NJ Thank Pack you. right here. And it, uh, it has been an honor to be your partner and your friend, and we look forward to doing great things together, John. Us too. One on one at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center with our partner and friend, John Schreiber. Newark is at a crossroads, and we're uh, going to be talking to the folks who are leading that effort to move the city forward right here at NJ Pack. Stay with us. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been provided by TD Bank, Cone Resnick, Gibbons PC, Josh S. Weston, The Fidelco Group, The Northward Center, and by Prudential Financial's Global Communications Department. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, Small News, Big News, True Jersey. And by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.